The Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times, and it's another unscripted video. So, uh, yeah, it's getting close to Christmas, so I've, I've been a bit busy. Uh, finally got Waterloo Part 2 recorded, um, I think that's about 40 minutes of audio, and will probably be longer once you add in the footage. So, in the meantime, I thought, I oh, know, I'll do another little unscripted video, because if you remember a while back, I did one of these going through the reviews for The Spanish Princess, and I thought, Hey, how about I do the same thing for the Mary Queen of Scots movie? Uh, so I've uh, got on Rotten Tomatoes this time. Um, it, I could do the Island be another time. <laughs> I will say one thing about looking at that though is like, how the hell did it get nominated for two Academy Awards? <laughs> oh, then again, it's it's best achievement in costume design, <laughs> you know, for the denim, and then best achievement in makeup and hairstyling. So, which is all these ones, these sort of types of drama seem to get these days is just the it's costume and designing, or it'll be, you know, an actress gets, like like here, it's Margaret Robbie for some of the other ones, like the Screen Actors Guild and stuff. But yeah, that's that's all they can get these days, because they're not that good. That's, that's the only thing they can give them. <laughs> but no, today we're going to we're gonna look at the critic reviews, and I've gone for the top critics. Um, I can't read most of these, because they're behind paywalls, but we'll just read, like, the little, little blurb. So uh, <laughs> we're going to start with my uh, my favourite one. Uh, Bo Willman's stiflingly exposition expository, god I can't speak today, expository screenplay, Moonlights is the undergraduate lecture David Starkey would give after a partial lobotomy. <laughs> oh dear, that's beautiful. Oh. Oh, I, I, I did think, I think there's one of the few I could read, um, London Evening Standard. Uh, some of this I didn't really quite agree with. Like, um, what was the line they were saying? Uh, Oh yes, yeah, there's a line here for some reason that says, It is in equally entitled to pepper the Tudor court with advisors of colour. I... is it? I, how? How? <laughs> that don't make sense. It's like, it's a Tudor drama. It's it, it, We're dealing with nobility and the royalty who wouldn't interact with other people very much. It's a bit like having a drama set, you know, during the American Civil War and you've got, you know, Morgan Freeman playing Robert E. Lee or something. It would be jarring. So no, you don't deserve that, but... Anyway, back to Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, oh, what's this? Gwen Smith and the New Statesman. Above all, Mary Queen of Scots excels at showing how women's bodies are so often weaponized against them. Um, <laughs> how do you mean weaponized? What is is like? Um, is uh, is Lord Burley? Is he just like grabbing Elizabeth and like using her as a sword? Is he during the film? <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, oh God, we got Nigel Andrews from the Financial Times. If the film were any more fun, it would be barely legal. How is this film fun? I, it's been a little while since I've seen it, of course, but it's like... And to be fair, like, it's it's better than The Spanish Princess, I'll say that. Because um, it does somewhat stick to the plot. I'm mean, like, how would you describe that as fun? <laughs> you know, all this sort of rebellions and executions and murder. I, that's the last thing I describe as fun. Uh, Peter Bradshaw and The Guardian. Uh, this is a heartfelt, serious-minded film about 16th century power politics from screenwriter Bo Willimon and director Josie Rourke. Theatrically conceived and influenced by Shika... Oh, no. By Shika Kapoor's Elizabeth. Yeah, it's not good to be influenced by Elizabeth, that film. Oh, by the way, I see History Buffs has done a really good um, review of that, so... Hey, well, welcome to the Tudor pain train. <laughs> you know, we all love it here. Uh... But yeah, that's that's right. That's when he says theatrically conceived, because that's because I think this Josie Rock, she she mainly does stuff from the theatre, and this was like her first film, and it does it really shows because that's the problem with it. Because I mean, the funny thing is, like back in the day with the old ones, when because that was back in the fifties and sixties and so on, like the people who were mainly coming into it were mainly from the stage who were making these things, which is why they shot them live rather than you know <laughs> some of these ones. But it kind of worked back in those days because they had they at least cared about authenticity, and the people writing it were people who cared about the history of it. I don't think Josie Rourke or any of these people care about that. Oh God, they they just care about sort of making fancy looking scenes and oh you know this about the theme of it and but like, you know like with her <laughs> with her old friend uh, what's her name again Alexandra Byrne you know with uh, oh yes I use the denim because oh I've got that I'll put the quick the the quote on the screen the famous ones like Jesus Christ. Uh, it reminds me of when I was doing drama back in my GCSE days. We we were um, what was the play? We were just one of Shakespeare's ones. I was a guard, and I was standing. So fair enough, you know, I I couldn't have a spear or anything, because props or whatever. But hey, you know, I'm standing there pretending to be a guard, and the, the king's throne. The king has to come and sit down. Instead of just getting a chair, they decided, I know, we'll get two sort of year sevens can, can pretend to be the armrests. Like another couple of the like, year eights can 
lean up to pretend to be the back of the armchair, and then we've got a year nine to pretend to be the sort of the <laughs> the seat part of the chair, and it's like, it's like, oh, for God's sake, why didn't we just get a chair? This would be much more simple. <laughs> and then the king had to come in, and then he couldn't sit down because he nearly broke his back, so we had to sort of squat there, and it's like, oh, dear. I mean, at least, well, at least they're not doing that in the Mary Queen of Scots movie. Spanish princess of mine, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> um, another one here from The Independent. Uh, the film inevitably does a disservice to its subjects. Mary and Elizabeth were real women, not historical superheroes. So, but why is this rated fresh, then? That sounds quite critical to me. Uh, can I read the full review? Again, it might be behind a paywall here. Uh, I've got three out of five. I don't know. How does this work with Rotten Tomatoes with its bloody... <laughs> Like I said, well, I mean, there's a whole drama isn't it, with the, the new Star Wars film where the, the um, audience ones are just stuck at 86%. <laughs> I didn't think that was that good, that Star Wars one. I was like, how the hell did the Emperor survive being thrown down a bloody reactor shaft and blown up? And did he just, like, Mary Poppins this way? <laughs> anyway, I bet I better leave that to the Star Wars lot. Um, I'll agree some of this. Uh, oh, no, I can't. Hang on. Or can I? Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, history's not the kind of Mary Queen of Scots. Da, 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 da. A new film of her life promises to reposition the reputations of Mary and Elizabeth, not as victim and destroyer, but as formidable equals. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the problem with trying to show they're like, oh, they're just sisters, you know, like, not, well, not obviously literal sisters, I mean sisters in the sense of their friends and things like that. Well, no, no, they're not. There's no, there's no concept of that in Tudor times, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking through this now. Some of this kind of quite critical. How the hell, why does that give them a three out of five? Oh, I don't know. So, um, continuing on. Uh, there's one one here for the Toronto Star. The movie tries to have it both ways, by remaining mostly true to the history, while while also taking numerous factual liberties. That's actually a, that's not a, that's a reasonable assessment, I'd say. You know, because it like as mentioned, it does kind of you know she turns up in Scotland, um, then it, that kind of roughly happens. But like I said, it's just so much they just they just change weirdly, <laughs> uh, and and then they did miss things like for some reason they have you know the um, the chase about raid, which was just a nothing really. They just literally it's called that's why it's called the chase about raid. And they make that into a big battle, and Mary's a military genius. But then the actual war, where she was there commanding, they don't mention it. That she just runs off. It's like, oh, yeah. oh, another one from the New Republic. In Mary Queen of Scots, we don't see a reckoning with the future of a country united across the Scottish English border. We see queens cry and fret about their hair. God, yeah, and the hairstyles and that one that did uh, that did annoy me a bit. Uh, rolling, hang on, Rolling, not the Rolling Stones, I assume. Even when the pace of the film falters, these two performers hold you in thrall. That's royalty. No, nope. <laughs> I don't know how it holds you in thrall. So uh, going on to the next page now. <laughs> oh, this is the BBC reviewing it. It looks suspiciously like the producers didn't have the budget for crowd scenes. Perhaps they had spent so much on hairspray. <laughs> oh, that's savage from the BBC. Two out of five, surprisingly, though, but... Oh this, this, oh, this looks this looks bad. Oh, let's read this one. Near the start of Mary, Queen of Scots, Mary arrives in Scotland from France in a rowing boat, having spent who knows how many hours or days at sea. Nevertheless, with her spotless haute couture dress and her magnificent hairdo in the shape of a tennis ba table tennis bat, she looks as if she has just stepped out of a limousine on the way to the Met Gala. It's not that type of film. Mary's four ladies, ladies in waiting, all named Mary, not that the script mentions this, are always ready for a magazine cover shoot. <laughs> Most of the men dress in matching black leather jerkins like the X-Men. Oh dear. That's, again, that's another thing that annoyed me as well, which is like the colour coding they have in the film. It's like, oh yeah, all the men in Elizabeth's court are wearing black. Uh, all the ladies are in blue. It's like, why? Oh dear. Uh, yeah, continuing on. Uh, <laughs> USA Today. Two crazy good actresses and a modern political resonance ruled in the 16th century period drama, Mary Queen of Scots. Even if the film doesn't go all in on historical accuracy. Yeah, you can say <laughs> you can say that again. Uh, a lush and ravishing pit... Are you drunk, Telegraph? <laughs> Are you sure about that? So, yeah, I thought I'd just recall this one uh, quickly. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm working on the, on the, um, the Waterloo review. If I hurry, that could be done before the new year, but we'll, we'll have to see, because, you know, got Christmas and everything coming up. So, anyway, this has been The Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day. This has been the most terrible year.